Well, hello there uh, to all my fellow Welshies, wherever you are in the world. And let me be the first person to wish you a happy St. David's Day. Now, this year is going to be a very strange St. David's Day because we all are under COVID restrictions. But I'm going to do this presentation and show you some of the things that I've been working on over the last 16 years, which may inspire you to do some things this year for St. David's Day. You can hold a virtual choir, you can sing the St. David's Day anthem, you can get together and sing together and just do it in a very different way. So I'm going to do a presentation now about the things that I've done for St. David's Day, uh, which have become a real success and my input over the last 16 years. So enjoy yourselves, I hope, and uh, let's see if I can manage to share the screen. So, and do forgive me if I stumble over my words, there's a lot to take in. So my name is Gwen David, and I run my own business as a broadcaster, performer, writer, uh, leadership and master public speaking coach. I have had a really interesting working life as a performer. This was the very first role I had on television as a chicken. Uh, and most recently I was in uh, the West End where I performed my one woman tribute show to the French singer Edith Piaf. I was very lucky. I had a standing ovation and two encores. It doesn't get much better than that. Uh, I've done uh, murder mystery weekends, uh, comedy in Edinburgh. Uh, I had a lead role in a film, theatre and education, television, and that was four programmes that I had commissioned about my grandfather's motorcycle trip around Europe, which we recreated in 1992. I have had some serious fun. I love comedy, as you can see, and my favourite roles have been comic ones. I've worked with some amazing people. That there, for example, is Johan Griffith. There's me, Damon Lewis, Joan Rivers, Amy Schumer, Dame Tani Gray Thompson, and of course, Brockers. I've been very lucky to have some successes with my writing. The very first thing I did was when I was seven years of age and I won the Nationalist Edward, the Irdist Edward Prize for the best story for under eight year olds. Start them young. Then I came second throughout Wales in the Nationalist Edward of Wales with a three act play called Paying the Full Whack, which was about the Falklands War. I've had a book published about female stand up comics. And I've also published and had um, a play performed on numerous occasions about the French singer Edith Piaf. My talk today is going to be about my best ever light bulb moments, which were the St. David's Day anthem, parades and counting school banners to celebrate St. David's Day. Well, the very first National St. David's Day parade, the NSDP, happened in 2004. I wasn't actually there but I heard about it. Uh, it wasn't very numerous, but there were people there and it grew. Now I am fiercely and passionately Welsh. And the second National St. David's Day Parade, I made sure that I was gonna be there. This was in 2005. There weren't an awful lot of people there because it was raining. And also I believe the queen was opening uh, the assembly at that time. So lots of people went down there instead. Now here you have Henry Jones Davis, and Gareth Westacott. And these were the people who came up with the idea of a National St. David's Day Parade. Well, I was on that National St. David's Day Parade and I was banging a bell, which had a wooden clapper and it was made of metal, like the metal bells that St. David's monks used to have. Now, I was walking directly opposite Cardiff Market, which used to be the site of the county jail, where Dick Penderin was hanged. And I felt literally that I'd been struck by a bolt of lightning. And that's when I came up with the idea of an anthem for St. David's Day. But was there a gap in the market? Was there an anthem for St. David's Day? One that singers, soloists like Bryn Terwyl, uh, could sing, choirs could sing, bands, brass bands could play. Well, there wasn't. 
So I, I set about thinking about what I was going to do about it. And I didn't say anything to anybody because I thought, no, they're going to be so, uh, they're going to say, it'll be so ridiculous. Who are you to think you can write an anthem for Sir David's Day? Anyway, I was on um, a ski bus uh, for 16 hours and I actually wrote the first verse and chorus in Welsh. Now, that's a picture of me, yes, crashing into a tree. I wasn't a very good skier. Now, we have a caravan in St. David's, and that's the view you can see through the front window, which is Carn Llidi. And just further down the coast was where St. David had his education. And that's where I wrote the rest of the verses, the three verses of Kenuch y Clyche i Dewi, Ring Out the Bells for St. David. And I took the verses to the person I was collaborating with musically at the time, Helen um, Thomas, and I said to her, I want a song that can be sung by children, by choirs, by uh, people in Wales, out of Wales, all over the world. And she came up with the goods and we went, I went to approach the NSDP uh, parade committee and asked them if we could perform this song. And Helen's standing there and I'm standing just behind that pillar, waiting to go on to sing the St. David's song for the very first time. And that was the first performance. And that's Helen, and that's myself. And uh, this is what 15 years of um, uh, not curling your hair does. <laughs> and this is Dave Peterson. So the winter of 2006, I was invited onto the parade committee and asked to become the children's liaison officer. Now, if I'd known then how much work it was gonna be, I'd have just turned around and cycled off into the distance, but I didn't. So I had this idea that the song was going to be a really good lever for bringing the children on board. So Helen and I went and got a recording of the song and I cycled around the schools of Cardiff, phoning them up and saying, can I bring a song to you uh, for St. David's Day? And uh, the next year, we had the first school's performance of Kenuch y Clyche i Dewi, Ring Out the Bells for St. David. And this is a Skolgamraig Trigana, Trigana Primary School, who sang it for the very first time at the beginning of the parade. And at the end there, this was Mont, um, Mount Stewart Square School in Cardiff Bay, who sang it. These are children from Ysgol Plas Mawr, and they, I am encouraging them to sing. By this point, I'd managed to get 300 children on board, and I used all my contacts in the press and media to uh, get uh, a lot of attention for the parade. So by this point, the parade had grown to about 1,500 people, which we were unable to cope with because we needed help. We couldn't just do that. I'd worked myself to the bone to get the children on board and my own work was being um, sidelined. And so we decided that we wanted to ask for some support from the National Assembly. So here we are, Gareth Westacott and myself going to talk to um, the Assembly. And I also, in the Estevod, uh, came across an organization called the National Grid for Learning. So I approached them and I said, do you have a project about St. David? And they said, no, they didn't. So they created a project about St. David and the song became a central part of that project. And this project was available to every single school in Wales. And the Welsh version and the English version of the song were uh, given to all the schools. Now, we became part of a partnership. So the uh, NSDDP, the National Assembly, and also Cardiff uh, Council. And with all of their clout and with all their, um, the ways that they could publicize it and my contacts in the press, uh, we were able to really grow that year. Lord David Ellis Thomas, who was the presiding officer at the Assembly at that time, he launched the NSDDP, um, the St. David's Day Song, and the National Grid for Learning's St. David's Project in the Assembly in February 2008. My very faithful television company, Tenopolis, were there 
to uh, record the proceedings. And as a result of all of the publicity that everybody was able to uh, develop, we had a hugely successful parade. Uh, we had uh, St. David who turned up in garb. We had a good brass band who came all the way from Pembrokeshire. This was a Skolgum Rag Penarth who came to sing the anthem. And there's Hyrun and myself being quite joyous because the song was being sung. There we are, taking part in the NSDDP. Now, the winter of 2008, uh, the parade were wondering, how can we grow the parade even further? And this was a, an issue with, that we used to discuss in the partnership meetings, which were quite regular. And I had encountered somebody who was very um, prolific with the St. Patrick's Day events in Birmingham, which were enormous. And they told us that the way to grow was to get all the counties on board. So I, get a, I got an idea of actually creating county banners that would have been similar to the lodge banners of all the mining lodges in Wales. Now, as a performer, I was doing an event in Fishguard, my hometown. So I went and did the gig. And after the gig, I went with the organizer, Gaynor McMorrin, for a glass of wine or two or three and told her about my vision about county banners. And she said, well, you do know, of course, that we have the designers of the Fishguard banner uh, who are part of the Fishguard Art Society. Now, for those of you who are not aware, uh, you've probably heard of the Bayeux Tapestry. Well, the Bayeux Tapestry is in France. The Bayeux Tapestry is in Fishguard. So this actually tells all the history of our famous role model, Jemima Nicholas, who stopped the French from invading Britain. So if you have a chance, come to the Fishguard Library, go upstairs and ask to see the Fishguard uh, tapestry. It is absolutely stunning and it's all handmade. Now, two of the actual designers of the Fishguard banner were Arianne Short and unfortunately, um, the recently deceased Audrey Walker. This is uh, Glesney Williams, who was part of the Pembrokeshire Embroidery Guild. And this is Gaynor McMorrin, who was the person who brought everybody together. And there's me, several years younger. Uh, and here I am with the um, Bishop of St. David's, Wynne Evans. And uh, yes, this is the original, what did the actress say to the Bishop? Um, photograph. And what I did say to him was, I'm working on a project where we're developing a banner for Pembrokeshire. Can we have it in the cathedral as a permanent home? And he was very keen on that idea. But first of all, we had to make the banner. So this was being made in the winter of 2008. And we had several people who were involved, uh, mostly women. But we did have uh, one man, Dennis Short, who uh, took a lot of photographs, as did Ian McMorrin. And Dennis also worked on the poles of the banner. Uh, my mother was part of this. And I actually did one stitch, which was very quickly removed, because I can't sew for nuts. In 2009, the song manuscript makes history as the very first manuscript, bilingual manuscript, to be sold as a download from a LOLVA website. And the very first copy, so this uh, was launched by Sir Bryn Terevel. He had the very first copy of Piano and Voice. The Male Voice Choir copy was received by uh, Tim G. Evans from Only Men Allowed. And we also had um, uh, an SATB mixed choir version and also a girls choir. The SATB version came to Fishguard, my hometown, and my mother's choir. And the female version went to uh, Corserial, which was run by my cousin, uh, Gwenant Pierce, up in North Wales. So the Pembrokeshire banner was launched at the Assembly on February 2009. And uh, we had a press presence, we had uh, Jane Hutt there, we had Nerys Evans, the assembly member, and my daughter Lori carried the banner in, and it was a really nice occasion. 
This is a Pembrokeshire banner. It's based on the words and images of the St. David's Day Anthem and also some of the, the images of St. David's Cathedral. I'll just take you briefly through them. Um, swarm to the hive like bees, which is a line from the, the song. And it talks about the, um, the people who, uh, um, the, the Welsh uh, people who don't live in Wales. Um, and so there they are, the expats all of the way up in the top there. And, and it's saying to come back to the mother Wales to uh, celebrate St. David's Day. You have the, the waves of Pembrokeshire. Um, talks about St. David and his small deeds full of um, good, uh, small seeds full of good deeds and some wag. Um, these are the small seeds here, but some wag said that they were Pembrokeshire potatoes. So they could well be that. And these are the, the parts of the cathedral. That's the roof, that's the Bishop's Palace. And that is the very same color of uh, the stone in St. David's Cathedral, which is mined locally. Well, this is the very first time that this song is called an anthem. Uh, it says here, here's Gweno David, who wrote the lyrics of the new St. David's Day anthem, Ring out the bells for St. David. Thank you very much, Western Mail. I don't mind. Oh, no, it's Southwest Echo, same family. Anyway, to 27th of February, it's now called the anthem. Now, the 2009 NSDDP was a huge event. We had uh, dancers who came over from Brittany. We had uh, a choir come up from Fishguard. We had people from Penkair Peninsula, where I'm from, that carried the banner. And as you can see, it was a, an amazingly huge success, probably because it was at the weekend, but also because we had the partnership pulling people in from all sorts of places. But this was actually built on every single year, which grew and grew from those uh, small uh, couple of hundred right at the beginning. We ended up, as you can see, on the assembly stairs, and it was a great, great event. Now, the results of the last four NSDDPs for me was total exhaustion. I ended up being un seriously unwell and in hospital. And so I decided that it was just too much trying to do all the voluntary work I was doing on behalf of the NSDDP and try and keep my working life going as well as my own uh, family life and my own work. So I resigned from the committee and uh, but I still did a couple of things. And so I organized a, a banner homecoming ceremony with Bishop Wynne in St. David's Cathedral in February, 2010. And uh, there you can see the banner and Goody Brass Band, Fishguard Choir and Bishop Wynne. And from that uh, time, uh, not every year, but a, um, a tradition was created where the a parade uh, the banner is paraded around the cathedral um, every year and local schools sing the St. David's Day Anthem. Obviously, we haven't been able to do that over the COVID crisis. Now, as you probably worked out, I like to create new traditions. And this was a new tradition I created at the Welsh Athletics Commonwealth Games trial at Leckwith. And uh, they didn't have anybody singing the anthem in the Welsh Athletics Games trial. So I went and approached them and I said, can I do that? And they said, yes. So I believe that that is still something that happens every year. Uh, I did it for two years and then they got some younger and prettier women in to sing it. But as you can see, this is a beautiful um, symbolic cloak made from um, one of the, the, some of the offcuts from the banner and also it represents the Pembrokeshire banner, which was, um, in St. David's Cathedral by then. Well, where's the song being performed from 2006 to 21? Well, I'm not gonna go through all of this list, but as you can see, it's been performed throughout Wales and it's been performed uh, in numerous places throughout the world, Patagonia at least three times, Disneyland, Paris at least twice, Houses of Parliament, Los Angeles, uh, Ontario, Toronto, Ottawa, and by this point, I have lost count of where it's been performed on the television um, and in concerts and in parades throughout Wales, which is a very good thing, I have to say. 
I was made a Cardiff ambassador in 2011 um, as a recognition of all the voluntary work I was doing for um, developing St David's Day celebrations throughout the world, which I was very proud of. And again, another thing that I did before leaving uh, the committee was I'd gone up to Liverpool and I saw this statue and it's a statue of Jude, as in Hey Jude, um, the Beatles song. And I approached the committee and I said to them, how about we get some giants? Now giants are pretty prolific in Belgium in parades. And I lived there for five years. And um, so I suggested, why don't we get some uh, giants in the parade? And uh, it took them three years, but they managed to get them. So I think this is Owen Glendur. We've got Nessa. Uh, I think that was Tom Jones, Shirley Bassey, and then um, a generic rugby player. Although it could have been, we're not sure, with that beard. Um, I don't know. Anyway. And in 2011, I was really lucky to go to uh, the New York um, St. Patrick's Day Parade. I was out there on a visit and saw the parade and it was just phenomenal it just went out on for hours and hours and hours and hours and i'm not kidding it was phenomenal and what you saw there was that every county was represented by a banner so my idea of getting county banners was um actually not a bad one so here we go you've got tipperary roscommon cork sligo cavern latrim monaghan uh, I'm not sure what that one is, but it's um, in America, St. Patrick's Day is phenomenal. It's huge. Everyone who has anything to do with St. Patrick, be that their great, great, great grandfather's second cousin removed, he's got a drop of Irish blood on him, then they will be celebrating. And uh, so everybody dresses up in wigs, in furry um uh, in uh, um, silly wigs, green, green wigs with uh, paint on their faces and everybody gets uh, a bit hammered and the crack is definitely on. Now, Aberystwyth, what's Aberystwyth got to do with anything? Well, I went there on the 24th of December, uh, September 2014 and I did a training day with Mente Aith Cymru, which is an always language initiative, which you may have come across. And I did an awareness raising presentation about the St. David's Day celebrations, the anthem, banners and parades. Now, at that time, there were three parades in Wales. So there was the NSDDP, there was one in uh, Wrexham, and uh, there was one in Aberystwyth. Now, by 2019, which was just pre-COVID, there were 25, 25. So it grew in five years, it grew to 25 and these were mostly run by the Mentre Eith and I'd like to uh, think that the awareness raising presentation I did was a, a, a really important part of that because um, I just told them what I've been doing and I think a lot of people were enthused by that and anyway the proof is in the pudding there were 25 parades. So then here we have the second um, county banner. It is again festooned with the words of the St. David's Day Anthem, Cenachal Clachay Dewi, Sir Gar, which means Carmarthenshire, and it was used for the very first time in the Carmarthenshire St. David's Day Parade in 2018, and it's now an integral feature in their celebrations. And here's the designer, Adrian Davis, with the main maker, Meir Nir Einon. And of course, again, it's got the some of the words and some of the images of the St. David's Day Anthem. And here are some of the makers of the next um, per, the next banner that came into being, which was also in 2017. And uh, again, words and images. Um, and it was taken around the local churches on St. David's Day and has a permanent home in the church in Llanidlois. It was paraded in the very first Llanvellin indoor celebration because it was cancelled due to the snow and it will hopefully be used in future celebrations because that's what the whole aim is that these county banners are used in parades to celebrate our patron saint day. Now I was very honoured in 2016 to be asked to become the global St David's Day ambassador for Mary Cymru. Now what's 
got uh, or, sh or she got to do with anything well if you're going to be a good ambassador you've got to have a good stack of Ferrero Rocher so that's an honor and I am very proud to be the world ambassador for America Emery and I just promote and I tell people about what we're doing in Wales the manuscript copies of St David's Day Anthem went on sale from T. Kerr in 2017 and I'm very proud that that's where they are based because a lot of our um, famous traditional songs are sold from this organisation. What are the future? Well, I'm still very keen on pushing the idea of county banners and Llyn and Yvionnydd have already shown a great deal of interest and uh, every school could make a new banner and I'm promoting St David's Day celebrations. Now, uh, this year, because it's uh, going to be a COVID-free celebration, the only thing I can do is to encourage choirs to learn the St David's Day Anthem and I can encourage schools to learn the St David's Day Anthem and get together and make their school banners and maybe parade them or have a, a Zoom get together. So that's all I can do and um, with the aim that next year we'll able, be able to go back out onto the streets and we will have done all the hard work of creating the banners this year so we can parade and we can all sing the anthem and join together wherever we are in the world or in Wales. Now talking about school banners, this is the very first school banner that was made and that was done by a Gors in 2014. And uh, I approached um, some Fagans to see if they'd be interested in having this banner for posterity, and they certainly were. So this is um, a meeting that I organized. And again, we had uh, Tinopolis who came to film the event. The children proudly carried the banner all around the playground and sang the St David's Day banner. And when they came in, they actually sang the St David's Day anthem and then had their St David's Day festival, which is the Eisteddfod, uh, which was part of our original um, traditions. But now we have an additional bolt on tradition, sing the anthem, make some banners and have a parade around your school. Now, this is Gwain Kegirwen's new school banner for 2020 and 21. I don't know what they're going to be doing with this banner, but they have already signed up to do a virtual parade. So I'm delighted that the school is still supporting and still developing the ideas that I uh, developed with them. So following that presentation in Aberystwyth, I have to say that pre-COVID, there were at least 22, uh, 20 permanent parades throughout Wales and some are actually, they spring up and I don't even know where they are and uh, um, who runs them. So these are the ones I'm aware of. So it could be that there's about 25 of them. And there's a book that came out in 2019, which is talking about all the St. David's Day celebration in Wales, including all of the, um, the new traditions that I've enabled. And um, so that's available through the medium of Welsh. I collaborated with Lori Ivor, giving her a lot of information about um, the banners, et cetera, et cetera. And, uh, just in case you haven't understood by now quite how persistent and determined I can be with anything I set my mind to, sometimes in life you just have to be a patient or sometimes in life you have to be patient even. So this is something. I've been a lifelong runner and in 1974 I came first reserve for the Welsh team. I had to wait 37 years before I managed to get my Welsh vest. And I represented Wales in um, the, an international running competition in Birmingham. And so that was in 2011. So I'm Gwen David. I'm a leadership and master public speaking coach. I can guarantee to improve your public presence on Zoom, in person, in presentations, in interviews, in wedding speeches, on the television and radio. Give me a ring on 07855 038729. Video testimonials on my Gweno David YouTube channel. And here's my website. 
And if you are indeed interested in developing anything to do with St. David's Day, a good starting point is to buy a copy of the anthem. They are they're available for piano and voice, uh, male voice choir, female voice choir, and mixed choir. And they're available with T Care. So it's been a delight to share with you some of the things I've been uh, working on over the last 15 years voluntarily. Nobody asked me, I just got on with it. So let me wish you another uh, very happy St. David's Day, and I may see you on a parade before long. Thank you very much.